If you've ever looked closely at a Cirrus aircraft, you've probably wondered about this split leading edge. Hello everyone, I'm Paul Bertarelli reporting for Aviation Safety and AvWeb. This split leading edge is part of what Cirrus calls its passive safety concept. As you know, every aircraft has a stall angle of attack. For most wings, that's about 17 degrees. But since the early days of the Wright brothers, we as pilots have been struggling with the ability to control roll through a stall. And that's what this split leading edge does. Cirrus's idea was to build in a slightly lower angle of incidence on the outer panel than on the inner panel. The effect of this is that the inner panel stalls first, the outer panel continues to fly, and you maintain roll control with the ailerons. Now if you've ever flown a Cirrus and you've done stall demos, you know that this works exactly as advertised. However, as the accident we're going to dissect in this video shows, it's not foolproof. If you use abusive control inputs, even the split leading edge won't protect you. Here's the setup. This accident occurred in February of 2008 at Lindsay, Oklahoma, which is just south of Oklahoma City. The flight took place close enough to Will Rogers Airport to be tracked by terminal approach radar. According to the NTSB's accident report, the pilot of the Cirrus SR-22 took off with an instructor to complete a flight review. The airplane evidently flew northwest of the airport and performed some maneuver before turning back toward the airport. It's at this point that things began to unravel. Although the pilot's intentions are unknown, he appears to have flown a path that would have put the airplane on a right downwind for runway 1, as shown in this graphic. The wind that day was out of the east at 5 knots, so either runway 1 or 19 would have been suitable. Whether he intended to use runway 1 or not, the pilot then made a sharp right turn with a steep bank that essentially put the airplane on a left base for runway 19, but on a heading angled slightly away from the perpendicular base leg. A few seconds later, he made a sharp turn back to the left, possibly in an attempt to line up with runway 19, or perhaps to enter a left downwind for runway 1. The accident report isn't clear. Either way, it didn't work out. The airplane crashed a quarter mile north of the airport, killing both aboard. Had there been no witnesses, this accident might have been just another of dozens like it where an airplane digs a smoking crater for no apparent reason. But there was a witness, and a very good one. Like all recent model Cirrus aircraft, the SR-22 had a glass panel suite, the Avidyne Integra. Despite the post-crash fire, the NTSB retrieved enough data from the Integra to reconstruct this flight in this video. Here's what the investigators found. At this point in the flight, the Cirrus is descending for that abortive right downwind. Significantly, its altitude is 1,520 feet, which is only 555 feet above ground level and well below pattern altitude. At this point, it's entering the right turn and reaches a bank angle of 47 degrees. The angle of attack increases from 6.5 degrees to 10 degrees in 9 seconds. That's a moderate pitch rate increase, but hardly aerobatic maneuvering. The wings weren't yet heavily loaded because the airplane was still descending slightly. A second later, as the airplane was flying through the runway center line, it rolled sharply left through wings level to a left bank angle that reached 60 degrees. The angle of attack increased from 10 degrees to 17 degrees. At this point, the airplane is at 223 feet AGL. Despite the SR-22's stall resistant wing, the flight data indicates that the entire left wing was above the stall angle of attack. This may have increased drag on the wing and induced more left yawing moment, essentially an incipient spin. The left aileron would have almost certainly been out of the game at this point. Surprisingly, two seconds later, the airplane rolled violently right, pitched down, and crashed. When it reviewed the data carefully, the investigators found out why. A fraction of a second before the final right roll started, the data showed a clear right yaw moment, and that's evidence of right or top rudder application. If the pilot sensed an incipient spin to the left, he might have countered it with full right rudder. But unless the wing is unloaded to break the stall, that's not counter spin input, it's a snap roll entry. And that's apparently what happened in this accident. Here are some final observations. You might say that this video shows that the more things change, the more they stay the same. The accident we've seen in this video is very typical of the type of stall spin or stall accident that airplanes have been doing in traffic patterns for years. For some reason, we can't seem to learn that steep banks and high load factors in the traffic pattern invite disaster. They should be avoided at all costs. It's that simple. 
To find out more about this accident, see the January 2010 issue of Aviation Safety at aviationsafetymagazine.com. Elsewhere on AvWeb, you can hear a podcast with John King and Rich Stoll, two veteran instructors discussing stall spin accidents. I'm Paul Bertarelli reporting for Aviation Safety and AvWeb. Thanks for watching.